Have you ever wondered how a tiny stream in the mountains can carve deep valleys, smash through rock, or even plunge off cliffs as a roaring waterfall? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Magfar Online, where learning never stops. In today's episode, we continue our series on surface forces that shape the earth by following a river from its very beginning, its upper course, high up in the mountains. This is where the river is young, wild, and full of energy. The middle and lower courses will be explored in the next video. We will explore how fast-moving water cuts deep into the land, creating dramatic features like V-shaped valleys, waterfalls, and rapids, potholes, gorges, and canyons. You'll see how erosion works like nature sculptor, carving out the landscape with incredible force. This is more than just river talk, it's a story of how water reshapes the earth every single day. Here's a quick question to get you thinking. What landform do you think forms when a river plunges over a steep edge of hard rock? Drop your answers in the comments, we'll feature the best ones in the next episode. And don't forget, there's a quick quiz at the end to help you revise what you've learnt. So like, comment, and subscribe, because at Magfar Online, learning never stops. Let's dive into the thrilling upper course of a river, from its steep source to the sculpted valleys below. A river is a flowing stream of water that leads to the sea, a lake or another river. The water is usually fresh, and rivers tend to begin as small streams that get larger the further they flow. Rivers generally begin in upland areas and flow downhill because of gravity. A river begins at its source, the high-lying spring or melting glacier where it first emerges, and travels to its mouth, the point where it empties into a lake, sea, or another river. Along the way, smaller rivers called tributaries join in, adding water and sediment to the main channel. As the river flows, it picks up bits of weathered rock, sand, and silt. This moving mixture, called the load, gives many rivers their muddy color. The load grinds against the riverbed and banks, eroding them piece by piece. Farther downstream, the particles become smaller and smoother as they collide with one another and the channel floor. The river's ability to move material depends on slope and speed. When the current slows, usually on flatter ground, it loses energy and deposits its load, building new landforms. A river typically flows through three main stages, the upper course, middle course, and lower course. In the upper course, the river begins in highland or mountainous areas where the slopes are very steep. The water flows rapidly and with great force, leading to vertical erosion that cuts deeply into the landscape. This creates V-shaped valleys, and landforms such as waterfalls, rapids, and potholes are common. As the river enters the middle course, the slope becomes gentler, and the river starts to slow down and widen. Lateral erosion, erosion of the riverbanks, becomes more dominant than vertical erosion. This causes the valley to widen into a broad U-shape, and the river begins to form large, sweeping bends known as meanders. In the lower course, the land is almost flat, and the river flows slowly with very little energy. Erosion is minimal here, and deposition becomes the main process. The river deposits much of its load, forming wide floodplains, oxbow lakes, natural levees, and sometimes deltas at or near the river's mouth where it meets a lake or the sea. A river's journey from source to mouth is full of twists, turns, and powerful forces, but today, we're starting right at the top. Let us explore the wild and dramatic upper course, where rivers roar down steep slopes. The upper course of a river is the first stage in its journey, starting close to the source, which is usually located in highland or mountainous areas. At this point, the river is small but very energetic due to the steep gradient of the land. The flow of water is fast, 
turbulent, and powerful, giving the river a lot of energy to erode the land, especially in a vertical direction, this means the river cuts downward into the landscape rather than sideways. Because of this vertical erosion, the river carves out deep and narrow valleys that have a V-shape when viewed from the side. These V-shaped valleys are a result of the river cutting into its bed, while the sides of the valley collapse under gravity, and are further broken down by weathering. Over time, this creates steep, rugged terrain. Rivers flow faster on steep land. Faster flowing rivers can transport a heavier and larger load. After heavy rain, rivers in highland areas can move large boulders. Slowly the boulders move along the river's course becoming smaller as they wear away. The movement of large boulders and rocks along the riverbed causes downward erosion. This produces a deep valley with steep sides. The upper course is also where the river may form several distinct erosional landforms. Potholes are circular holes found in the solid rock of a riverbed. They form when pebbles and other sediment are trapped in small depressions and swirl around with the river's current. Over time, this movement grinds and wears away the rock, creating smooth, round holes in the riverbed. Rapids are sections of a river where the water flows quickly and turbulently over hard, uneven rock surfaces. Unlike waterfalls, rapids do not involve a sudden vertical drop. Instead, they form where the riverbed has a steep gradient combined with resistant rocks that disrupt the smooth flow of water. This causes the water to churn and foam, creating what is often called white water. Rapids are commonly found in the upper course of a river and indicate areas of high energy where erosion is actively shaping the riverbed. A waterfall is one of the most dramatic features found along a river. It forms where there is a sudden drop in the riverbed, usually because a layer of hard rock lies on top of a softer rock layer. This happens through a process called differential erosion, where the river wears away softer rock more quickly than harder rock. Typically, the harder rock is resistant igneous rock, while the softer rock is usually sedimentary. Because the hard rock erodes more slowly, it forms a cap or ledge over the softer rock, creating a step in the riverbed. As the river flows over this step, the softer rock beneath continues to erode quickly, deepening the drop. This leads to the formation of a vertical drop, and the river water plunges over it, creating a waterfall. At the bottom of the waterfall, the falling water hits the riverbed with force, forming a deep, bowl-shaped plunge pool. Here, powerful erosion happens through hydraulic action, the pressure of the water, and abrasion, pebbles and boulders grinding the rock. These forces carve into the softer rock behind the waterfall, creating an overhang of the hard rock above. Eventually, this overhanging hard rock becomes unstable and collapses into the plunge pool. As this happens, the waterfall moves slightly upstream. This ongoing process of erosion, undercutting, and collapse is known as headward erosion. Over time, it causes the waterfall to retreat backward, cutting out a steep-sided gorge. Waterfalls are usually found in the upper course of a river and are a clear sign of rapid vertical erosion. They mark a sudden change in the river's slope and show how powerful a river can be in shaping the land. Gorges and canyons are dramatic landforms created mainly by river erosion over long periods of time. They usually form in the upper course of a river, where the river has high energy and flows through steep, mountainous terrain. A gorge is a narrow, steep-sided valley that forms when a river cuts down into the land through a process called down-cutting. One of the most common ways a gorge forms is through the retreat of a waterfall. As water flows over a waterfall, it erodes the softer rock beneath the harder rock layer. Over time, this erosion causes the overhanging hard rock to collapse, and the waterfall moves slowly upstream. As this process continues, the river carves out a deep, narrow valley behind it, this is the gorge. Gorges are usually straighter and narrower than canyons. 
In some cases, gorges can also form in areas that were once covered by glacier. When the glacier melts, rivers may flow through the exposed land, cutting deeply into the rock to form a gorge. Gorges are dramatic features that show how powerful river erosion can be over time. A canyon is similar to a gorge, but it is usually wider, deeper, and longer. Canyons form over millions of years as a river slowly cuts through layers of hard rock, such as limestone or sandstone. This process is known as downward erosion. A canyon often develops when the river starts to flow more quickly, which can happen if there is more water in the river, a drop in sea level, or if the land is uplifted. All of these changes give the river more energy to erode the land beneath it. A gorge and a canyon are both deep valleys with steep sides, but they are different in size and how they form. A gorge is usually narrow and very steep, often formed when a waterfall retreats upstream, cutting deeply into the land. Gorges can feel tight and dramatic, with cliffs rising sharply on both sides. In contrast, a canyon is broader, wider, and much larger, formed over millions of years as a river slowly erodes through hard rock like sandstone or limestone. As the river cuts deeper, it leaves behind terraced valley walls, which are step-like features showing different layers of rock. A well-known example is the Grand Canyon in the United States, carved by the Colorado River. So, while both landforms are shaped by rivers, the main difference is that gorges are narrow and steep, while canyons are wider with visible rock layers and more open space. When you visit a river's rapids or a thundering waterfall, you'll find that these dramatic landforms are more than just scenery, they're perfect sites for outdoor fun. First up is whitewater rafting, where the river plunges over resistant rock, frothy waves, and fast currents form natural obstacle courses. In an inflatable raft, a team uses helmets, life jackets, and sharp teamwork to steer through boulders and sudden drops turning the raw energy of the river into a thrilling ride. Next is kayaking. A kayak is a narrow boat paddled with a double-bladed paddle, by alternating strokes, the paddler can glide across karma stretches or tackle choppy white water just below the falls. Kayaking builds strength, balance, and river reading skills as you learn to anticipate currents and eddies. Finally, there is swimming in plunge pools, those deep, shaped basins at the bottom of a waterfall. The falling water churns the pool into a cool, bubbly jacuzzi that's refreshing on a hot day, provided you check the depth, avoid hidden rocks, and never swim alone. So, we have just seen how that the upper course of a river is steep, wild, and full of energy and that it can reshape mountains and valleys through the powerful force of erosion. Pretty amazing, right? Now it's your turn, pause the video, try the revision questions that will follow, and lock in what you've learned so far. But don't go anywhere, because the journey is about to get even more exciting. Coming up next on Magfar Online, the middle and lower courses of a river. Watch as the river slows down and twists into meanders, cuts off oxbow lakes, spills into wide floodplains and builds massive deltas at its mouth. You'll witness the river's transformation from a force of destruction to a creator of fertile land, where people settle, farm, and build entire civilizations. Want to understand why cities rise by rivers? Curious how a single river can change the face of a continent? Like, subscribe, and turn on that bell so you don't miss it. This is Magfar Online, where learning never stops. Stay curious, stay sharp, and I'll see you in the next video as we follow the river's journey through the middle and lower courses.